Someone asked me to make a second wedding guest look and I have a wedding to attend on Saturday. So Ankara Look 6 is going to be another wedding guest outfit. Now stay with me. This is the Ankara design. It's cool. It's blue. It's mature. And this is the design that I'm going for. I'm so excited about this bubble sleeves, the boat neck, the the detail you can see here is actually some sort of net thing crossing each other. You're going to see it in the video and a thigh high slit and the silhouette is like, you know, the straight dress. So let's get started with the patterns. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to my channel and check out the description box for Ankara Looks 1 to 6 playlist. I am going to get started now. Starting with my basic back bodice where I measured 6.5 inches from the neck down and I drew a straight line on there. I then measured 4 and 3 quarters from the center front and lastly I dropped the side seam by 1 inch. Then I drafted a curve to the neck. I erased lines I no longer needed to create room for adding seam allowances after which I then added seam allowances. I added one centimeter everywhere except for the center back where I added two centimeters to accommodate a zipper and the pattern looks like this. I moved on to the front where I first transferred the shoulder dart to the side by drawing a line at the side. I cut out the shoulder dart and then I cut on the side line that I just drew. Next I moved the shoulder dart opening to the side. Now that that's done, I measured 6.5 inches from the shoulder just like I did on the back and drew a straight line there. I measured 4 and 3 quarter inches from the center front and 8.5 inches down from the shoulder. I drafted my neck freehand first and my new armhole which is 2 centimeters or 1 inch down from the original one. Then I used my pattern master to go over the both of them. I drew a very small dart in the neck with like, you know, first either there might be some gaping and I closed it up and I slashed the waist dart open to give it room to lay flat again. I closed that dart, I started to add seam allowances to the pattern and to further redraft the neck a little right where it meets the armhole. I continued with adding seam allowances and the pattern looks like this. Don't forget we don't add seam allowance to the center front. So when you stitch the dart in the side, the length goes back to matching the side back. I first made the pattern for this dress and then while I was sewing the dress, I made some major changes to it. I decided to refilm the pattern making just for this video. So if you see some slight differences between the bodice pattern I just showed you and the bodice of the dress that I'll be making for the first few minutes in this video just hang in there because it regularizes later. For my front skirt I divided the waist circumference by 4 and I drafted that then I added a whooping 2 inches seam allowance. I did the same at the hip which is 9.5 inches from the waist and then the legs and then I used my pattern master to join all of these points together. Now this paper has actually been on fold so I cut it out and I opened it up. On my front bodies, I measured the distance between the center front and the first dart leg. I translated that to the skirt and I added 0.5 inch of seam allowance right next to it at the hem of the skirt and also at the middle and then I drew a straight line. How could I forget to drop my center front by 0.5 inch at the waist? After which I went on to draft the second dart. The only dart. The other one is a slit.
Next, I cut the front skirt slit open and I placed these two pieces on fabric very close to each other, as close as possible. And then I added the length that I needed to make it to, you know, a full length skirt right on the Ankara and I went ahead to draft out the lines and I cut out the skirt in the Ankara fabric. So I practically used my front skirt pattern to make my back skirt pattern. I first drew a line 2 cm from the center and then I cut off the excess. Next, I practically reduced the seam allowances by 1 inch at the hip and the legs and I left the waist untouched and then, you know, I just cut. I drew on the dart. Then I cut out a long Ankara skirt, just like I did with the front. I don't quite like this. This was done in error. I was not looking and the lady just like literally poured all of the glitter. So, but this, this I love. This is more me. I made a fatal error. I totally forgot that I needed to buy the tool that I need to drape on the skirt. I did not remember until night, just a couple of hours ago and all the haberdasheries are closed. There's two options. I want to sew now if I'm able to actually carry through to the point where I need to do all that. I don't know, I might, I might have to just move on, but anyway, I doubt. I'm just gonna try to do without it for now, and uh, tomorrow I'll get it. I guess it would just elongate my sewing time. So let's get into the video. I stitched all the darts on the bodies and skirts of both the lining and the Ankara and it was a lot of darts that came to a total of 18 darts and 2 slits. So watch me make some of them. So I had stitched the slit together and finished the edges. So I started to draw on guidelines for my draping. I marked a point 9.5 inches from the waist and then I drew these slanted lines from both sides of the skirt to meet this one point. Each of these is 17 centimeters tall. Okay, so I drew more lines on the left side and on the right side and I was ready to start draping. I started to pleat the fabric onto the Ankara. I would pleat and I would pin to keep them in place and I would repeat cycle until every single space was filled up and I tried to also hide the raw edges from sight. I cut off the excess and here it is. Time to join my bodies to my skirt and I did that. I'd also joined the back bodies to the back skirt as well. So marked the point where I wanted the seam to start from. So I would run a straight stitch from here all the way down. I pinned on my zipper and I stitched it to the back dress. After this was right, I placed the front and back dresses on top of themselves and I sewed the side seams. 
Next, I top stitch this very tiny fraction of a centimeter all the way down the hem of the skirt. Then used hemming glue to finish off the hem of the skirt. What you see me doing here is hand stitching the drapes down from the wrong side of the dress. Of course, obviously, this has to be hidden, discreet, no one can know. So I hid it from sight as much as possible. Basically, nothing was showing on the right side, right? And I did that. This took quite some time to do. But after this, I was able to get rid of the pins without losing the drapes. I tried it on at this point and it wasn't looking too bad. To make my sleeves, I used the 22 1 quarter inches wide and about 16 and a half inches tall. What I did next was to place my dress on top of it and then rule that out. I would cut <laughs> just this much and when you open it up it is this large. I wanted this to be heavy and thick so that it could hold that bubble without falling off or looking too soft. So I combined it with a thick satin fabric and I will not go in to stitch them at the top right sides facing. What I did next was to stitch a straight line at the top of the sleeve and this is going to serve as casing for elastic much later. From here on out I will stitch this two as one. I stitched the side seam next and then I went on to top stitch the hem using a stitch seam allowance of about one and one quarter but I would leave room to insert elastic. This elastic is nine inches long so I started to insert it in the hem of the sleeve. Don't forget to secure the other edge so that it doesn't also go inside as well. I continue to insert this and I will take it all the way through to the other side. At this point I tried it on to see what would be comfortable for me to wear from my wrist up and with that I could figure out how much elastic to cut off. And so I sewed that and you can see me checking to make sure that the seam was strong and this would never unravel. And after I had confirmed that, I went ahead to stitch small opening I left before. I went ahead to stitch it closed. This elastic is six and a half inches long. I went on to insert it in the top of the sleeve. I would stitch it into the armhole of the dress. And now we have this. Don't forget to leave about half seam allowance at the top of the bodies because you're going to need that to finally sew on the lining. I would sew on my lining at the top of the armhole all the way through to the end and then I would finish it at the zipper as well and the dress was looking like this. What I did next was to use a hemistitch to just keep the lining and the anchor together so that they are not billowing apart. In the end, the dress looks like this, slid together. I thought to just like give you a tour. At the back, it also looks like this, an opening. You can see the seams are hidden and all that stuff. Thank you for sticking to the end. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And like this video. It's so important to click on the like button because it helps the algorithm to figure out that you truly like the video and that maybe more people will as well. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.